Okay, graphic design two. This is your custom Illustrator demo for getting your sketches onto the computer and making super awesome logos. We are going to start with a new Illustrator document like so. My panels are a mess. I apologize. All right, I'm going to first bring in my sketch, AKA Deborah sketch. So I just opened this JPEG in Illustrator. I can just work off of here or I can copy it and put it on like a larger artboard document if I prefer, like so. Pasted it in here, copy paste. All right, so I'm gonna, make this a little smaller. Okay. All right. We're going to lock down this layer. Uh, so you can literally just hit the lock on the layers panel. You can also double click on here and you can click, you get this pop up layers option. If you click template, it will dim the image to whatever percent you choose. It defaults to 50. Um, and which looks like this. And also you'll notice that now layer one is in italics and it has a different icon to the left of the lock uh, lock button. That means that this layer won't print. So if you were gonna export out a PDF or print your file, the template layer would not print or be shown, uh, even though you can see it in Illustrator. So that's like a little, uh, insurance, if you will. If you want to do that, you can do that. Again, you just double click on layer one, layer options pop up. This is also where you can change the color of your layer. Uh, if you're working on something and you're trying to make it, in this case, blue, and the layer is blue and you can't see your uh, paths, you can always change the color too. Handy tip. All right, so this was template. If I had to check it off, it's just gonna go back to normal. You can leave it on and it will not print. You can see print is no longer checked uh, in this listing. It's a little light though, let's make it a little darker. Okay, now I'm gonna just create a new layer, the little plus icon, and I'm going to use my pen tool to basically trace over my sketch. Everybody does the pen tool a little differently. Uh, anywhere you click, you put an anchor point, uh, and that is a potential place to uh, put in a curve or change the direction of the line. Uh, the less anchor points you have, the smoother your curve would be. Um, all right, so I made my line. I'm just going to click the black arrow to get out of the pen tool. And I'm going to switch this from being a white fill to a stroke. Make it a black stroke. Could be any color you want. Okay. Um, so that is the path. Then if I want to curve the path, instead of having those sharp angles at the anchor points, I'm going to use the behind the pen tool if I click and hold the anchor point tool. So that's this guy. Uh, and if I just hover over my uh, path, any point where there's an anchor point, you see a little white box, I can click and drag and that pulls out these handles. And as I'm still holding my mouse, I can create different types of curves to the line. So I'm just gonna try to mimic my sketch a little bit. Um, if I need to move the stroke, uh, the line at all, I can use the white arrow, the direct select tool. That, again, is just going to, I can just click on the anchor points and click and drag and move them around if I need to. Can also, do the handles with the white arrow if there's already handles created. Like this one, there aren't handles. So I, I need to use the 
um, anchor point tool to create handles first, like so. And then uh, you can just chain, move like one side of the handlebars if you want as well. All right, so there you go. Uh, if you're doing this and you're like, well, I can't see the line underneath this line, you can always change the opacity over here in the properties panel so that you can see your sketch underneath uh, like so. And then I would probably make this not black so I can actually see what I'm doing like that. Um, that's usually how I work so that I can see what I'm doing and see what I'm uh, tracing against. Also, uh, I usually have smart guides on. I think this is the default that they're on. If the smart guides, the things that uh, try to like align stuff for you get obnoxious, just turn them off under view, smart guides or control U. Uh, if you turn them off, you get a little more uh, flexibility <laughs> with how you're moving stuff around the page. Um, we also talked about in the stroke panel, I can make the edges of my line here. Instead of just straight across, I can give them a curved nub if you like the way that looks. All right, um, I can always use the shape tool, like uh, again, to like kind of make the circle. And then I'll just do that. The eyedropper to match the same color and opacity. All right, and I'm going to build my guy like so. So again, pen tool, click wherever I want an anchor point, deselect pen tool, anchor point tool to make the curves like so. So pretty. Okay, and then I can use the white arrow. The key command is just hitting A to get into the that one. There, that looks pretty nice, right, my little guy? Okay, and I'll eyedropper him to make everything match. Okay, so once I've done all that, oh, this is for Raven, the star. Okay, so there's a star shape which is great because you want to make a star. Um, the defaults is this. You have the ability to add multiple points to your star. What I'm doing is my mouse is still clicked down to as if I was um, like just, you know, when you're just making the shape from the start, you click and you drag to make a star of a certain size. While my mouse is still clicked down, I can use the arrow keys to add or subtract points of my star all the way down to triangle. So that's how you make a triangle. It's just a three-sided, three-pointed star. Okay, so you can decide how many s points you want. La la that with the arrow keys. I have not released the mouse yet. Uh, additionally, you can affect how large the oopsies how large the uh, indentation of the spikes are like you can see I just changed it by holding down option or alt if I release it it goes back to normal and then if I hold down control uh, I still have not released my mouse. I can like pull out and make the spikies more like that or less. So control is probably the easier one to use. So again, uh, I have not released my mouse. I can arrow key more or less spikes and I can hit control. I'm on a PC. It could be command if you're on a Mac. I think it's still control. Uh, to make the spikies bigger or subtler, more subtle. Okay, and then when you're happy with whatever you've generated, you just release the mouse and it's a star. And then the next time you go to make a star, it'll be the same 
dimensions as the last star you just made. Okay, so that's how you make a star and or a wacky star. Okay. So once I'm done with my folly guy, let's see, what else did we want to learn? Uh, oh, we're going to type on a path. Okay. Um, so to type on a path, first you have to draw a path. So I could use the line tool and then use that curvy tool to make a curvy path. You can add points to a path. Again, underneath the pen tool is add points and delete points. So you could add a point. And then if I go to the hit A on my keyboard, I get the white arrow. Oopsies. And then I can change the path with the handlebars. All right, so now I have like a fun curvy path. I'll make it a different color so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, we're gonna work on this blue thing now. All right, and I'm gonna put, let's hide this. Okay. I'm gonna type Bali X on that blue curvy path. So I'm not gonna see the blue path. It's just uh, where the text is gonna fall. So behind the text tool, if I click and hold, is type on a path tool. And you just click on any path, like so, and you get some text. So we'll say Bali X. Obviously, my text size is way too big for the size of this path, so I'm going to just select all the text by doing Control A or triple clicking to get it highlighted. And then I'll come over to the properties panel and there it is. Uh, change, you can change the font, you can change the variation, I'm going to change the size like so. All right, um, and now you can see the text is on this path. The blue disappeared because it's just a path, which makes it means it's invisible. And when I click off of it, it just looks like fun, uh, curvy text, like so. Um, this same premise is if you were going to like, you wanted a circle, and then you wanted to type on like an arc, you could do that here too, like so. Um, the type on a path tool, so either one of these works the same way, where I'm going to use the white arrow, so I just hit A. This bottom vertical is the orientation of the letter, so if I click and drag it up, now you can see the letters are inside the circle versus, uh, oops, here it is, outside the circle. I can also click and drag it to change where uh, the letters are going to go, right? So I want them on the top of the circle, per se. Uh, as you can see, this guy is, it's really finicky, and you're just going to have to, like, mess around with it. Okay. There's also, so that's this vertical. Then there was these two other vertical lines with squares in the middle of them. That is the starting and ending point of your text. So this one on the left side is the beginning of where the text is going to go. And the one on the right is the ending of where the text is going to go. So if you wanted to somehow like wrap the whole circle of text, you would have to have these two lines like almost touching. Additionally, you can see this text is left aligned. If I come over to paragraph and I center it, that's like one way to get the text again like centered on your circle. And then I would just want to make sure that these two things are essentially touching that blue, that pink line is that smart guy telling you like that's perfectly in the center of the circle. So that Bali X is perfectly centered on that ellipse that I made and again clicked off it just looks like a nice arc. Um, if I go to outline mode, which is C 
control Y or command Y, uh, you can see all the paths. So you can see the curves and all the paths of all my pieces. Command Y again, or control Y takes you back to preview mode. Sometimes it's helpful to be able to see the path with the text uh, if you're trying to like fix uh, fix something. See, I clicked on this one and you can see those same elements. Uh, like I can pull Bali over more this way. Uh, that's what those pieces are doing. Okay. Okay, so that was typing on a path. Um, the next thing we can do is I like to leave things text as text until I'm positive I'm not going to change them anymore, but sometimes you need to make them shapes to really be able to do what you're trying to do. If you, that is the case, always make a copy of it as text first. So uh, just like any other shape to make a duplicate, you hold down Option or Alt with your keyboard and then you get that double arrow. That's how you know you're going to duplicate. So then I can click and drag, and then I have a copy of whatever. Um, hold down Alt or Option, and then you click and drag. And that is the best Illustrator tool. That way, if you're making logos, if this Starburst was my logo, and I wanted to then start doing these variations like I talked about in class, uh, I could just make a copy, and then maybe I'm going to rotate it, and then I'll come back up here and I'll make a copy, and now I'm going to flip the fill, right? So it's like a really quick way to make subtle changes to one idea by just duplicating the last thing you did or the first thing you did, changing it somehow, and moving on. So definitely embrace the duplicate function. Okay. Um, one other thing I showed you guys tonight was uh, Raven wanted to have that like very like graphic drop shadow look to her thing. So all I did was make a copy of the letters and I just changed the color. Um, so I could do it like so. I'm going to right click and send this to the back. So the copy is behind the black. And then now I have, right, like a little blue drop shadow on Bali X. And obviously you could make them bigger and smaller and kind of mess around with it to however you like it to look. Uh, you could also make this top one just a stroke, like so, or I could give it a white fill. Kind of Again, it's all kind of changing the look, but don't forget you're only doing black and white logos. Um, but that would probably still even look cool here. That's the blue one. So that's like what that could look like. Something like that. Again, so that's how that was created. It's just a duplicate of the same type put just off center, like so. Um, oh, and then the last thing I showed you guys was uh, if you have. So like this is a good example. If you have like a regular shape and you want to put a stroke around it, but you don't want to mess up the integrity of this original shape. So here we'll just duplicate Bali X again. Um, so let's say we had this Bali X and I wanted to put like a big stroke around the whole thing without messing up the width 
and the thickness of the actual letter forms of Bali X. Because if I just added a stroke to this, oh, I have a stroke on this, it would mess it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up under Object, Path, uh, Offset Path. Let's see if I needed to turn this to a shape first. I have a feeling I did. I don't see it changing. Yeah, okay. So first we have to change this to shapes. So we'll go up under type, create outlines. Now it's no longer text, now it's a shape. Now I can do object, path, offset path. Ah. Actually, what else I'm gonna do is change this. Let's make it a color so we can see it at work. Okay. I don't know if that will work. Offset path, oh yeah, it just goes back to what it was. All right, so obviously the bigger the number, the bigger the stroke. And if you hit tab, you can kind of see it change to something that you like. That seems like too much. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, if you look on your layers panel, we're in this group because it has a red uh, X or a red square on it. So if I turn it on off, you can see that's the whole Bali X. If I open the group, um, it's a little bit easier to select each individual letter. Um, so that's one of the background ones. So I'm going to take off the stroke and fill it in. Just make it blue so we can see it like that. And then I'd have to go through, I can use the eyedropper, an eyedropper, all of these background strokes. like that. So if you're trying to make basically like strokes on top of strokes or a stroke around a solid shape, that's how you would do it. And like this B obviously has to get pulled forward so that the blue pieces are all underneath the white pieces. I can do that down here too by just dragging the blue under the white like so. All right. And you can always change these as well. So that's uh, how you could make a stroke around your words or put a stroke around a stroke. Uh, and you can keep doing that in, like infinitum. If you want like another stroke around the blue stroke, do it again. It's just object, path, offset, path like so and then I can make that one a different color if I even if I wanted to like that all right I think those were all the things I was going to show you hopefully that helped give you some more tips and tricks in Illustrator um, and again, uh, how I would work is I would probably have like a really messy artboard that's just getting the shapes and the different pieces of my logo set. So like once I'm done with this guy, I would select all of it and we'll probably make it 100% opaque and we'll make it black, right? And then I'll group him Oops. so he is one piece. Um, and then I can start to, again, make copies of things. GMB change the scale. Again, I could group that. Um, and now I can start to build my logo like this. Um, and then I probably 
would make another artboard. You hold down spacebar to get the hand tool real fast to move around your page. And I would probably have uh, the logos that I'm building on a new artboard and all my pieces on this first artboard. Um, and then as I build out options, again, I can just hold down Alt and then move stuff around and make changes and kind of just go through this like very quick process of considering how I want my stuff arranged. If you haven't made it that far yet, I think mo maybe you're still considering a couple options. Um, and then once you've done that iteration, right, you can like make another artboard and then say like, this is the logo that I like the best out of this sheet. I can duplicate this over here. And now I can start to refine it further. Uh, however, I plan on refining it further. Um, and so that's what I would do. I would end up with a very large, very messy, multi artboarded file, but it's all in one place. And uh, there's a very logical uh, flow of from where I started to where I finished again by picking out doing a bunch of things, picking out the one or two things I like the best, putting them on a new artboard, making further refinements and considerations and variations, picking out the thing I like the best, putting it on a new artboard until I eventually whittle it down to my final logo. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Good luck, have fun. Sorry if that was long. Uh, just email me if you need anything and have fun you guys.